People call Molly Reno. I think she's at her way. Okay. There's no forward resource. My name is Molly Reno, M O L L Y R E N O. All right, before you begin, Council, I, um, I let uh, the Attorney General know that, and I think Ms. Reno had let the Attorney General know that I do know Ms. Reno. We haven't seen each other probably in 20 years, maybe? Probably a little over 20 years. We used to practice against each other. I will tell you that she was the only one that beat me. You know, I was, <laughs> but but I haven't, I haven't seen her in all that um, time, nor had any communication, but I wanted you to know that I do know of Ms. Reno. All right. Thank you, Judge. You may inquire. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Reno, uh, what is your um, I am licensed as an attorney and I practiced law until about 10 years ago. Were you licensed here in St. Michigan? Yeah. What kind of law? Um, I practice a variety, civil rights law, landlord tenant law, divorce law, something law. And were you interviewed by the Ann Arbor Police Department uh, as part of this case? Yes. About how many times do you think you're here? Um, I think two times in person, and then I might have had three phone calls. Um, I'm not sure. It's been a while. Um, you, prior to coming in here, did you review um, some court filings from the Washtenaw County Family Court? I did. And were many of those filings Filings that you had filed in the family court case? Almost all of them. Okay. And were they also filings that you responded to um, uh, in terms of an attorney for Mr. Williams? So you had to respond to those filings? Yes. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I have already shown people's 26 through 55. Um, I believe there's going to be a stipulation to the admission of these for just exam purposes only, and there's just going to be, um, I'll, I'll allow the court to have an opportunity to review all of them, but there's just going yeah. to be a few I'll highlight, I think, for being more expedient. All right. Is there going to be any objection to exhibits 26 through 55? No, not for exam purposes only. All right. Exhibits 26 through 55 are admitted. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Reno, you were able to have a chance to, um, it had been, what, 40 years, 41 years since you filed these documents. Is that fair? 40 and 41. Okay. Yeah. So you had an opportunity to go through these and review these before your testimony today, correct? Yes. And um, you also put together a chronology of, of your memory based on reviewing those documents. So your involvement in this case, correct? Yes. And it, it was a chronology based upon the documents. Okay. That helped you refresh your memories. Yes. How exactly. everything yeah. happened. Yes. Okay. Uh, were you contacted back in 1982, about June of 1982, by a then Denise Williams? I was. Okay. Were you retained by Ms. Williams? Yes, I was. Okay. Uh, in what capacity? Um, she wanted a divorce and she needed a Domestic violence restraining order. Did you initially get going in June and July filing those requests for Ms. Williams? I did, and I had to file for what's called a separate maintenance because she didn't meet the jurisdictional requirements for divorce. Um, and again, that is going to be, Ms. Reno, people's proposed, Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, you may. People's not proposed. People's Exhibit 26. Is this the complaint for custody and separate maintenance? You're going to have to help me because I don't do any similar. Is that <laughs> what we're referring to? Yeah. Okay. Is that because Ms. Williams and Mr. Williams at that time were residents of Ohio? Um, she was a resident of Michigan, but she hadn't been a resident of Michigan for the time period required for a divorce, which it might have been 180 days that you needed for to have jurisdiction to file for divorce. And 
Ms. Reno, it looks like you filed a couple different uh, personal protection orders for Ms. Williams, Peoples 27 and 28. Looks like one was um, filed and docketed June 17th and one was July 15th. Do you remember why there were two different, were they just different court dates or different files? Um, the first one is what's called an ex party restraining order, although maybe it was temporary restraining order. Um, and because the defendant hadn't been served with the paperwork, it was just for a short period of time, then to allow me to serve him with the paperwork so he could come in and object to the restraining order and to the custody order if he wanted to. So that time period expired. And so then I had to file again for another restraining order. I think that Let's talk about people's exhibit 29. There was an order for temporary possession of the minor child. Who were we talking about in question there? Alyssa Williams. Okay. And was custody at their given that at that time temporary custody to Denise? She was given an order of temporary possession, temporary custody, yes. At that point, what's the date on that? Uh the date this was. Well, the date is July 30th, 1982. At that time, had Elisa Williams been brought before the court? No. Um, had Isaiah been brought before the court? Had he been in court yet? Um, I don't think so. I think he was served and he failed to appear. But he was served, you indicated. Yes. Okay. You filed multiple restraining orders for uh, Miss Williams, now Miss Fraser Daniel. Um, I believe uh, there was a five year injunctive max order. What was that? Explain what that is. Yeah. Um, at that time, the maximum period of time that you could have a restraining order was for five years. And so at the time of the divorce, I asked for that five-year restraining order, and the judge granted it. Was that um, common back in the 1980s, around 1982, to be able to get a restraining order of five-year injunctive max? It was just starting to uh, be available. It was... Ms. Reno, it looks like you also, according to the documents that we admitted, um, filed a... Another restraining order in April of 1983, October of 1983, and November of 1983. Is, would that have been the, the issues with service again? Um, same issues that you were talking about, making service that uh, Mr. Williams could object if he wanted to? Yes. What's a writ of habeas corpus? Um, well, at that time, um, uh, Mrs. Williams, Ms. Williams, um, told me that Mr. Isaiah Williams had knocked her down and taken the 10 month old child of this up. Maybe she was six months old at that time. And I was trying to get him before the court so that the court would order him to answer questions about the whereabouts of that infant, Alyssa. And so a writ of habeas corpus was an attempt, well, that actually worked. It was an order for him to bring Alyssa Susan Williams before the court. And in looking at the documents that we've already admitted, we have um, People's Exhibit 31, and we have People's Exhibit 33, we've got the writ of habeas corpus and the order for writ of attachment. What's the difference between now? What's the order for writ of attachment? Um, the order for writ of attachment is akin to an arrest warrant in a civil case because Mr. Williams did not comply with the first order, which was to bring that minor child before the court. Ultimately, was there an uh, arrest warrant for contempt of court issued by the judge in this case? Yes. Well, who was the judge at that time? Um, judge Ross Campbell. 
and looking at people's admitted 35, is that the warrant for arrest for contempt? Uh, yes. What's the date on that? October third, October seventh, nineteen eighty-two, signed by the judge, and filed with the court a few days later. At this point, had Mr. Williams brought the child to court yet? No, he had not produced the child. Right? No. And the, I believe that there was also an order to show cause for Mr. Williams to come before the court and answer as to why he beat Denise Williams. And so when you asked me earlier about the order to show cause, I should have looked at it to see whether that was for the violation of the domestic restraining order when he beat her and choked her and put her in the hospital for two days. And did you, were, did you as her attorney get an opportunity to not only talk to your client, but review police reports with respect to that particular yes. call? Was Mr. Williams uh, convicted of anything with respect to that? I believe that he was convicted of felonious assault. He was charged with assault with intent to commit murder. And I believe that he was uh, convicted of felonious assault. What was what would be a referral to the friend of the court? Why would a referral to the friend of court happen during these proceedings? Every time there's a divorce case or at that time, a separate maintenance case, and there's a minor child, there's a referral to the front of the court to do an investigation to decide which parent is the, where the custody should be. Should it be with one parent? Should it be joined between both parents? So they make a recommendation. Was that done here? Yes, it was. And is that some of the documents reflected in People's 37 and 40, uh, the referral and the, the preliminary front of the court file? There should be additional documents in, inside the Yes. And what was the question? It, did that take place with their preliminary uh, recommendations from the French yeah. court as to who should have custody of the child? Yeah. Mr. Williams did not appear, and they uh, awarded custody to Denise. Well, at this point, have you or Denise seen the baby? Had the baby been brought to court? No. By Mr. Williams or anybody else? Nobody else. At some point, it looks like you filed a petition to amend the pleadings. Um, to, was this to change it from separation to a divorce? By having resided in the state of Michigan for the required period of time, and what she really wanted was the divorce, in addition to the protection against domestic violence and possession of the child. Uh, Alyssa Susan Williams. So we were able to, I was able to amend it, and the judge granted the order to amend. <laughs> Is this the copy of People's 39? Is that a copy of ultimately? I should ask, was the, was the divorce granted? Yes, the divorce was granted. Do you remember when the divorce was granted? Uh, not off the top of my head. Is that a copy of the divorce record uh, yes. confirming the divorce between Mr. Williams and Ms. Williams was yes. ordered? Okay. Now, Ms. Riedel, it looks like there was a new order for writ of attachment in January of 1983. Had Alyssa been produced for the court yet? No. Is this why there was a new writ done?
Yes, this, um, because he failed to bring Melissa before the court. And yes, that this was a writ of attachment, which in effect was an arrest warrant. And so now this is now the second, essentially, not essentially, this is the second arrest warrant in the, the court file for Mr. Williams for failing to bring Melissa Williams to court. I believe so, yes. Um, and then on January 24th, yes, absolutely. Yes, this was for his arrest for failure to bring oh, this is before the court. Ultimately, it looks like Judge Campbell ordered a new ex parte order to Peter on January 24th, 1983. Does that look accurate to you in the best of uh, your memory of the filings? <laughs> Yes. And in that document, and this is People's Exhibit 44 for the record, it does indicate that Isaiah Williams was ordered before the court in January to tell the court time and place where he last saw the minor child, the name of persons to whom he entrusted possession of the minor child. Is that correct? Yes. Um, ultimately, um, was there a hearing held for this very purpose February 1st of 1980? There was a, a hearing held, and I believe that that is the date. Um, we're going to talk about that hearing, um, but let's talk quickly. Well, let's actually talk about it. Let's just talk about it. It's on, on my mind to talk about it. Were you present in, on February 1st at that hearing? I was. Okay. And at that time, was Isaiah Williams present at that hearing? He was. Was that in front of Judge Ross Campbell? Yes, it was. Was Denise there as well? Um, at that time, did Mr. Williams uh, take the stand and testify? Yes, he did. Okay. Um, was he sworn under oath, if you recall? Oh, I recall. He was sworn. Oh. What did Mr. Williams say? with respect to uh, Olissa Williams and where she was? He said, Mr. Williams said that um, he had Alyssa, I believe she was 10 months old at that time. He said she was in the car with him and that he drove in Ann Arbor and he drove and parked very close to Island Park, which is over near the U of M hospital. And he fell asleep and she was, in, as I recall, the backseat of the car, but someplace in the car. And he fell asleep, and when he woke up, he said she was gone. Was Mr. Williams, well, let me ask first. You said Island Park in Ann Arbor, is that correct? Yes. Is there a body of water that runs through that particular park? Yes. What What body of water runs through that park? It's a stream, and it might be the Sharon River. Okay. And was Mr. Williams asked if he reported this taking of Alyssa to the police? Yes, I found it, um, it just didn't seem credible to me that a 10 month old could get out of the car on her own while he was asleep. And so I asked him, well, if she was missing when you woke up, did you report this to the police? And he said, no. So Mr. Williams' versions of events is that he fell asleep in the car and that he woke up and she was gone, correct? Correct. He did not report to the police, correct? Correct. Did he indicate to you whether she had any possessions in the car that were also taken or whether, whether they were still there? I don't recall that 
he said one way or the other. And I want to add that I also asked him, did you report this missing infant to any other authority other than the police? And he said no. And when you say any other authority, what were you referring to? Um, I just thought he should have reported that any responsible parent would report a child who's missing to the police or to anybody else, like any other authority. I didn't have a particular authority in mind, but I just wanted to cover all the bases. Yep. Who did you tell? And did Mr. Williams indicate if he told you anybody that that this disappeared, that he told anybody about the disappearance no. of this child? And I asked him, did he tell his sister, who he indicated he was living with off and on that summer, did you tell her that Alyssa was missing? And he said no. And then he also indicated he was living with the next wife that summer. And I said, did you tell her that this 10-month-old was missing? And he said no. Speaking of where he was living, his attorney filed some documents. His attorney was Andrew Phantom. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. He filed some documents um, listing on there some information about where Mr. Williams had, had lived, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm handing you People's Exhibit 48. I'm going into page five of that document, the affidavit in support of motion to dismiss for want of jurisdiction. Uh, was that a document you recall being filed by Mr. Williams' attorney? Yes. Okay. Did it indicate at that time the residence that Mr. Williams was staying in in 1982? No, I Okay. Yes. Um, in this affidavit which was signed by Mr. Williams. Um, and it was the sworn affidavit. It states that Mr. Williams was living as the president of the state of Ohio and that he returned to Michigan because of his mother's illness in June of 1982. And he temporarily resided with his brother in Pittsfield uh, Township in it says Ann Arbor. Oh no, kids who grow Ann Arbor. And that he also resided in the Paradise Hotel on Ann Street in Ann Arbor. Um, and that then he left for the state of Alabama during the month of July, 1982. And it says that he, Mr. Williams in this affidavit is stating, swearing, that during the months of July and August 1982, that he worked at a maintenance department in Sherfield in uh, Alabama. It said Sherfield, Alabama? That's what this okay. says, S-H-E-R-F-I-E-L-D. So that document confirmed two locations in, in Washtenaw County, correct? That he had been residing in, and one in Inkster, Wayne County, correct? Yes. And then confirmed, go oh, ahead, I'm sorry, two or three in the Ann Arbor area. And, and it also confirmed that in July 1982, he left the state of Michigan to go to Alabama. Right? Yes. Uh, after Mr. Williams made these statements on the record in front of Judge um, Campbell, what did Judge Campbell do? Um, Judge Campbell put him in jail for contempt. Did Judge Campbell also order a psychiatric evaluation for him? Yes, he did. And those are confirmed, that's confirmed in the documentation that you uh, reviewed as well, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, and that's the record now that's going to be Exhibits 45, Order for Psychiatric Evaluation, and uh, Exhibit 47, Order for Diagnostic Commitment of Defendant. Do you recall approximately how long Mr. Williams was incarcerated for contempt of court based on the statements he made in court? I think it was uh, for 60 days. Um, Eventually, did you go back to court because they were going to release Mr. Williams from jail? Yes. Did you file uh, some documentation to try to prevent that from happening? Absolutely. I was very upset that he could make such contemptuous statements, such unbelievable statements about the whereabouts of that child, and um, then be released from jail. 
So I was attempting to persuade the judge to keep him in jail until he told the truth. Is this People's Exhibit 49? Yeah. That's your, your opposition, plaintiff's opposition to release in jail? Yes. Ultimately, was Mr. Williams released from jail? To my great disappointment, he was released from jail. Yeah. Um, was he required at that time to give any further statements as to the whereabouts of Elisa Williams? I don't recall that he was. Did he ever bring Elisa Williams to court with him? No. You've already testified regarding some additional uh, restraining orders, the five-year restraining orders uh, that you filed on behalf of uh, Ms. Williams, now Fraser Daniels, this one such order. That's for the record, Your Honor, people's exhibit. Thank you. What am I looking at here in People's Exhibit 53? Um, this is the principle of the prosecuting attorney, and the prosecuting attorney appears on behalf of, at that time, minor children and divorces, and it, it gives them an opportunity to place an objection on the record if one is warranted, and it's kind of a pro forma thing. Okay, and this is whether or not at this time, it would have been Mary Carroll, who's the assistant prosecuting attorney, would have objected to the divorce on behalf of Elisa, and she did not. She did not, yeah. Was it ever established on the record, if you recall, during these contempt proceedings, or the divorce proceedings, or the child custody proceedings, that I stay away from the father of the I would have to refresh my memory with documents. Okay. I do recall that he was not a biological father, but I don't remember um, if that was placed on the record or not. Back in 1982, 83, um, was there a legal presumption um, of, of a defendant being a father that you'd have to get past if it wasn't placed on the record or something like that? There was a legal presumption that if a couple was married, that the husband is the biological father of every child born to the wife during the marriage. And that could be challenged with paternity taxes. But in the absence of that, um, it's the husband's presumption. Back when you were representing Denise Williams, now Fraser Daniel, um, was Denise indicating at that time that she wanted child, uh, child support or anything like that from Isaiah Williams? She did not. She wanted him to stay away from, yeah. From what was her purpose? What did she want from these hearings? Well, what she wanted was her child back. And she wanted to know where is the child. And she wanted possession of the child as she had been awarded both by the Ohio court and the Michigan court. And in terms of your filings from separate custody and maintenance over to official divorce proceedings, um, did Mr. Williams, through his attorneys, continue to contest the divorce? No. They did not contest the divorce? No, the attorney contested jurisdiction for the divorce. And the judge ruled that she had been in the state of Michigan long enough and was entitled. There was no other contesting of the divorce.
I have no further questions. Thank you, yes, Mr. Sure. Okay. The attorney, uh, Andrew Fanta, entered an appearance solely for the purpose of contesting jurisdiction. Okay. It was not, it was not a general appearance. And that, that appearance, he filed, correct me if I'm wrong, with that affidavit that we just talked about where you laid out the addresses for Mr. Mr. Williams and all that. Right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Reno. Cross-examination. One moment, Yes. Was the, I'm sorry, good afternoon. Um, was the biological father ever involved in any of the court proceedings? Um, no, not that I recall. Was he ever named at all? All that he was named, but he might have been. And to your knowledge, were any of those residences that were listed in the affidavit ever investigated or followed up on? Um, Mr. Williams' mm -hmm. residences, yes. Um, the out-of-state ones as well? Uh, it was the out-of-state residence that was investigated. But I only know that by looking at paperwork. It wasn't part of the divorce case. Okay. So when you say um, paperwork, you're not talking about the filings that happened in 82, 83. You're talking about subsequent stuff that happened like 20, 30 years later. I'd have to look at the paperwork to tell you how much later, but it was not part of the divorce proceedings. Okay, so in 82, 83, when the divorce proceedings were going on, the residences that were provided by the attorney who only appeared to establish jurisdiction, they were not investigated at that time is what you're saying, correct? Uh, Asking investigated by home. Anyone? I wouldn't know. Okay. So to your knowledge, no. I didn't know. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? No further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. People call Peters. Um, can we do this? Let me, because we've been going about two hours, I've got to get my staff a little bit of a break here, about 15 minutes. So if we can reconvene about 4 30. How many more witnesses are you um, just? I have three today, but I think I'm only going to call two. Betty Peters will be very quick. Bruno will be very quick. I'm going to leave Mr. Uh, Detective Ivers Iverson for tomorrow since he's going to be late. Peters. All right. So, so the next witness is very quick. You think? I think so. Let's get him up here. Then. Let's let's just do it. I swear, firm and testimony about the case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys. Yeah, let's see stage your first and last name and for the record. Go ahead. Go You want to spell it? Can you spell it? Spell All right. Thank you. May inquire. Ms. Peters, can you hear me okay? Okay, if I ask something that's confusing, just tell me to repeat it. If you don't understand my question, if you can't hear me, anything like that, okay? Do you know somebody by the name of Isaiah Williams? Yes. Okay, who's Isaiah Williams to you? Okay, do you see him here today? Yes. Okay, can you point him out, and describe him? Pointed to the table, is he, is he wearing a piece of clothing? Is he wearing anything that's descriptive that you can describe for us? Quite Thank you. That, let the record reflect that Ms. Peters has identified the defendant. Without objection, so the record shall so reflect. Ms. Peters, how old are you today? 85. What did you previously do for employment? Um, nurse. Okay. Were you an L LPN? Okay. And where did you work? University Hospital. Okay. Is that the University of Michigan Hospital in Ann Arbor? Yes. 
Okay. How long did you work there? A total of 20 years. Okay. Back in the summertime of 1982, so I'm going back pretty far, okay? Do you remember seeing a baby by the name of Alyssa Williams? Yes. Okay. Who did you see the baby with? Who did you see the baby with? Who was the baby with at that time? Okay, and is that your brother Isaiah? Okay, and just to make sure we're actually talking about the same person, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 1. Is this the baby we're talking about? Yes. Does that look like the same baby? Yes. Okay. Ms. Peters, when you saw Alyssa with, with your brother um, in the summer of 1982, did, you, did he ask you to watch her so he could run some errands? How did you see her then? Tell me what you remember. Did she seem like she was a healthy baby? Pardon? Did she seem like she was a healthy baby? Do you know about how old she was? Okay. Where were you at when he showed you the baby? At home. At home. Where, where was home back then? Where I live at, um, okay. in, Ann Arbor. in Ann Arbor. Did did Isaiah stay for a while with the baby? Yes. Okay. After that time in the summer of 1982, did you ever see Alyssa again with your brother? Did you ever see her again at all? Okay. Have you ever asked your brother what happened to that baby? Not really, no. When you say not really, um, okay. Tell me, tell me why not? Why, why have you never asked your brother? I was more concerned about my family. Okay, you were worried about your your own children, right? Okay. Um, did the defendant ever tell you um, about something happening to her at a park? Okay. Do you recall talking to Detective Iverson um, back in 2011? That would have been quite a long time ago, but okay. I don't, I, I believe that's him. Okay. It was a long time. Long, long. Been about 12 years, is that correct? Okay. So would you happen to remember telling him that, that Isaiah, your brother, told you that the baby disappeared in a park when he woke up in the car? Okay, so you didn't say that. Ms. Peters, did you or your brother have any close relatives or family in, in Alabama back in 1982 or 83? I don't have no families that I can remember that was close to me. <laughs> and nobody that you knew that was close to Isaiah in Alabama either, correct? If, if you know. If she knows. Do you happen to know whether Isaiah was close to any of them? No. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Ms. Peters. Okay. But the defense well, attorney oh, might have hold any on. questions for you. Hold on. We got to let the other side <laughs> ask you some <laughs> questions. Okay. We got to let the other side ask you some questions. Okay. I don't have any questions, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Peters. M thank you, Ms. Peters. You may step down. <laughs>